So welcome back to Sip the Tatter Presents Ravens Roundup. This is me, Coach Evans, again with the second video of the week uh, with our blowout win over the Houston Texans. And today we're going to talk about uh, our defense of the um, DeAndre Hopkins, New Hopkins. And uh, when I decided to do this video, while watching the game, I was like, man, we shut, we shut him down. We, we, we locked him up, clamped him up. And then I went to look at the stats before I did this video. He had five catches for 80 yards. I don't really recall him catching the ball more than three or four times. But he did. He did. He had, um, I'm sorry, he had eight catches for, don't, don't make me lie to you. Let me look it up again. I just know he had 80 yards. I don't know how many. He had 12 targets. He had seven catches for 80 yards. Five of those catches came in the first quarter for 43. And so um, in the second half, he had two catches for whatever, the what, 37. And so, uh, but still, when I show you this video, you're going to see like, we really put the clamps on this dude. Even though he got free in some zone situations, but for the most part, when we played man on him, he didn't get open for the most part. And then we didn't just straight play man on him. We mixed it up. We kind of bracketed him a little bit. And it was, it was one play in particular where he was bracketed and didn't even know it. And I didn't even know it until the ball almost was thrown to him. But uh, let's get right into it and see how we defended. Uh, the Ravens defended um, New Hopkins. And in my opinion, he's the best receiver in the game. Anytime a guy can have 130-plus catches in a year without a drop, that's what you pay receivers to do. Don't drop the ball. And he didn't drop the ball at all last year. I think it's been a little bit different this year. But um, let's see how we put the clamps on this guy. All right, so this first play, he's located. They're located right here. Him and Marcus Peters. Let's let it, let it run through first. So he actually gets a catch early in the game right here on a little pick route. And it's not much you can really do about this if pick route is executed right, especially if you're in man coverage. All you can do is just try to get knocked down and then uh, make the tackle after he makes the catch or banjo it. But with the way they, they – it was a good play design. They got the tight end, a linebacker guarding him, and he's, he kind of runs in here and Hopkins stutters and comes underneath. So early in the game, he gets a, a, a catch that he maybe thought was going to get him started, get him going good. But uh, shortly thereafter, the, the clamps came down. The cuffs came, got, got put on. And, you know, had he taken another step, he might have been KO'd by Bynes on this one. In fact, let me go back and let you see that. Had he taken another step, Bynes might have just straight laid him out. If, if Bynes doesn't open up, I'm assuming, the, uh, I'm assuming Watson just kind of moved him with his eyes. But if he opens this way, it might be lights out for Hawkins. But he get this first catch and, you know, it is what it is. Tackle by Bynes and Peters. All right, that's up here. Now they're here. This is... Uh, Hopkins and I want to say it's Peters again. Yeah, Hopkins and Peters again. Yeah, in his hip pocket. In his hip pocket the whole way. Bag it up. Again, they're right here. I just watched this good tight coverage by Peters. Yeah, Marlon avoided the the um, pick. It's a good job Marlon avoiding the pick. And Peters is, is, is right on it. A little incidental minimal contact. Hawkins tries to break in, right in his hip pocket. No space. No space for him to get open, which led to a sack. All right, now they they, did, they try to do this a lot, trying to combine him with somebody that's trying to, you know, miss, mistake the coverage and get them to bust or miss the banjo or or maybe just to, to screen them, but whatnot. But it didn't work that much. So here's here's Hopkins right here. This is Peters on the outside and Marlin on the inside, if I'm not mistaken. And the good thing right here is this little part where Peters made Marlin back up so they wouldn't be on the same level. Because if they were on the same level, all these two receivers had to do was cross and they would run into each other. And then one of the two guys would be open. But the fact that they got off, or got on different levels, meaning Peters could go underneath or Marlin go over top or vice versa, how they want to do it. They just have a less chance of running into each other if they're off on the same level, if they're on different levels, rather. And you see, that's what they tried to do. He jumped right inside. and But by them being on separate levels, they're able to hold their main responsibilities. Now, this is Marlin putting the hands on 
on um, Hopkins. Hopkins tries to come across, and Marlon knows where his help is. That's why he kind of jumps outside of him. But he's holding him up, holding him up. Now I can get behind him because I know I got help with Earl in the middle of the field. So, Deshaun, you can throw this ball if you want to, but Earl may be going the other way. And now with that being said, you know, it's scrammage real because he wanted to throw this here, not open. Um, Peters has him locked up too, so he's not even looking on the backside. He's trying to go to one of these two guys. Scrammage real in effect. So now he runs away from – he turns away from Hopkins and I'm sorry, he turns away from Watson and he's going to try to throw Hopkins over here in the corner. This is the play that they complained about was pass interference, but if no flag was thrown, it's not pass interference. You like good defense to me. And I let the back view play on this one so we can get a, a up close view of this, um, you know, potential pass interference. You see Marlon in right in his hip pocket. And Deshaun just throws it up, hoping for a prayer. Prayer not answered. Prayer not answered. Can't, you can't just throw it up and expect the referees to bail you out. It was a busted play, man. You were covered. So you can't just throw it up and be like, yeah, hey, he touched me, he passed the fish. No, get open. Get open or make something happen. The referee's not going to bail you out all the time. Uh, back off the soapbox. This is Marlon down here on it at the bottom of the screen. And this is the one that he's bragging that he didn't even know it. Look at that. He Marlon comes off of uh comes off of Hopkins, takes the out route. Uh I think this is Chuck Clark is kind of sitting right in this gap right here. And the transition is seamless. The transition is seamless. So the communication between Clark and Humphrey and Earl is awesome. So they know whatever coverage this is, Humphreys knows if one goes in. Two got to come out. And so two going to either be this tight end or this, or, or this tailback. So, if the, you know, a lot of times when they number guys, they number one, two, three. And certain people on the defensive side have certain numbers. So, you know, he may have one out or two out. Or it depends on how they play. But they transition this smoothly, so the communication is good. So that was a, that was a tackle. So I thought it was tight. And that's a tackle. So two comes out. Marlon comes off on it. And, and Chuck Clark takes number one. It's covered. It's covered. No way to go to the ball. He's looking down here. You can throw it there and potentially get it picked. You can throw it here and potentially get him decleated. It's a good job of coverage. And so if you happen to split that and come back out here, now you got Earl sitting on the top. You got it all covered. And then just glance up at the top. He's covered. He's covered. Now, he might have a whole shot here because everybody's looking that way, but he's not even looking that way, so we good. This flat guy, you know, we'll give we'll give that up and, to defend the deeper balls. But now, when he does look that way, look at him. He got closer. They bragging him up. He's over top of that. So, when Deshaun did come off of it, the little bit that you thought may have been open, they're locked up now. And you still got good coverage down here at the bottom. Still got good coverage right there. Earl's still over the top of it. Chuck Clark's underneath it. DBs, man. DBs with good coverage leads to another Judon sack. Now, Judon going to reap the benefits of all these coverage sacks. He's going to get paid handsomely because of all these coverage sacks. You better take the DBs out to eat or something. All right, so again, I got this little stack situation I talked about earlier. This is Marlin. This is Peters. Let's see what happens here. Is the inside release on Marlon. Marlon's in good trail position. All over. No space. Zero space. <laughs> Zero space. Zero space. Again, get the hands on him and ride it. In phase the whole time. Trying to do a little crossing out. What he's trying to do is stem him up and lean on him and run across the field. Marlon doesn't let that happen. He stays in his hip pocket. In his hip pocket. No way to go with the ball, which leads to another sack by Peanut. All these coverage sacks, man, and and they're gonna get ben they're gonna get the benefit for sacks, but these guys are covered. They're locked down. Let's see, we are right here. Hopkins is here against um, Jimmy. This is Jimmy Smith. So all three of our main corners have had a shot at, uh, at Hopkins in this first half. Look at Jimmy, the vet. <laughs> don't, I don't have to cover you down the field if I don't let you get off the ball. 
Lock them up, Jimmy. Move your feet. Move your feet. Work your hands. Look at that. Look at your footwork. It's hard to get guys to just move their feet. Watch Mark, Watch uh, Jimmy's feet. He ain't touched him yet. Good footwork. Good footwork. Now he's putting his hands on. Now come here. Good footwork. We don't care about what's going on down here. We locking this guy up. He's the main threat. As long as he don't get off, we good. And this is the third different guy that's been on him. This next play. Let's see. Up here with Jimmy again. You wouldn't expect a, a guy of Jimmy's age and and um, how much he's been hurt. And he's probably lost a step to kind of do what he's doing to Hopkins. But Jimmy's heady. Jimmy's extremely smart. And he knows his limitations. And he knows what Hopkins is good at. So it's best for him to just get him before he gets going. Play his leverage to the sideline. Let him run outside. Jimmy lets him run outside and gonna use the sideline as an extra defender. So even though Jimmy is one on one, it's two on one. It's Jimmy and the sideline versus Hopkins. Now watch as Hopkins goes up the field. Jimmy's gonna kind of press him close to that sideline, close to that sideline, making the making the throw hard if he decides to throw it over there. Let him go. Press him to the sideline. Press him to the sideline. Where you gonna throw the ball? Where? Your throw would have had to. You'd have to make a perfect back shoulder throw to get that ball in there. There's no space, and he's pressured to the sideline. So, that's one defender. Jimmy's two defender, and I don't know who this is coming to. I can't tell who that is. Maybe Earl. No, that's not Earl. Whoever this is. So, really, it's three on one. And because Jimmy did a good job of pressing him to the sideline and not letting him stem his route. But Jimmy's washed. <laughs> Says who? This tape don't say he washed. All right. Now you got... Uh, all right, we got right here with Peters again. Hopkins and Peters. Hopkins and Peters. Mm. Put a little off man on this one. Great ball skills by Peters. This is, you know, Hopkins doesn't do anything in the route, but he kind of slow plays it and and again Deshaun's throwing it up, hoping for a prayer. Now being that he's throwing it up to him, I can understand throwing it up as much as he does because he a lot of times he comes down with it. So this, to me, is more of a, a, a shout-out to the Ravens DB, DBs because Hopkins comes down with a bunch of these balls that Deshaun throwing to him. That's why their connection is so good. Taking away the inside, just going to turn and run with him. Turn and run with him. In phase. In phase. Now, at this point, Right here. Hopkins has him beat. And he kind of knows it. He's in scramble mode. But what he does is he lets Hopkins catch the ball and just punches it away. Hopkins has the ball. Now Peter just punches it away. That's it. And I love the celebration. Love the celebration. This guy was locked in, man. Well, Peter's been locked in since he's been traded. He's been locked in since he's been traded. And watch the... um. Just watch him punch the ball out once Hopkins catches the ball. Now, see, he has the ball. And look at that hand swipe. Just going to come punch it out. He punch, He about to punch it out right now. Boop, get out of there. So, yeah, you can beat me, but you got to finish the catch. You got to finish the catch. That's a, that's a good job of not giving up on the play. And at the bottom right here, we got Peters and Hopkins again. Playing off, man. Hey, you thought you was going to run a slant, didn't you? Thought you was going to run a slant. Peters knows he has that help on the inside. He knows he has that help on the inside. This is Carr. Carr playing safety. And Carr just reading just reading uh, Watson's eyes. That's all he's doing. He was on this guy. He's, he's, he's dropping back because Watson's looking down the field. Right, Watson turns, he turns. And when he turns, his eyes go straight to number one. Throw it if you want to. Throw it if you want to. We going the other way. So he they have this cover. All the other receivers on the other side of the field. All Deshaun can do is take off. And look at the pursuit. Look at the pursuit. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if I'm not mistaken, this is one of our deep tackles. And I know this video is not about a deep tackle, but let's see who that is. Can't tell the number. 
Might be our new guy. No, it might be Ward. It might be Ward because he ran pretty good. It might be Ward. But anyway, this one of the D tackles right here. Getting down the field. Wait a minute. Is that 9 8? Man, it might be Brandon running like that. I should have put the other part on there. But it looked like Brandon. But anyway, this one of the D tackles getting down the field. And all these plays came, came from the first half. And um, he got his catches when we were not in man. He caught us in a couple zones. And he does a good job of sitting down in zones and came off some pick plays and got some catches too. But uh, for the most part, the Ravens DBs did a great job of pretty much putting the clamps on the best receiver in the NFL, even though he still had 80 yards. But um, there were quiet 80 yards. Nothing spectacular, no big splash plays. Just he was almost not a factor, almost not a factor at all. And uh, the DBs have done a good job of, of just working off each other. The uh, with who was that with the the green dot Clark with the green dot, good job of communicating. They're uh, passing people off in zone coverage seamlessly. It's it's a bunch of good things you can say about these DBs on the fact that they can all play man too, which will allow us to get a little bit pressure, a little bit more pressure up front. The longer they can cover, they can cover for five seconds, we can get pressure. Now if they can cover for three, we won't get pressure because we don't have but really one pass rushing that's Judon, and um hopefully. Something's in the works with Judon because he's pushing that 10 sack total that I talked about that's going to get him paid, and he's probably going to push past it. He's probably going to push past it. I predict the 14. I don't know where he's at right now. If you know how many sacks Judon got, put it in the chat box below and let me know. But um, this is the video. This is the second video of the week. Uh, the Ravens DBs lock up Hopkins, and uh, my Patreon video will be out Friday or Saturday. And I appreciate you guys. This is Coach Evans with Sip the Tally Fans presents Ravens Roundup. Peace. I've been asked, how can people support my channel and help it grow? And after talking to other YouTubers, Patreon.com is the answer. Any amount donated will help build the channel. My goal is to get a telestrator and help explain the ins and outs of the game even more. So go on over to Patreon.com backslash Sip the Tally to support the channel. And there will also be videos for subscribers only in the future. This is Coach Evans, and again, thanks everyone for the support. And head on over to Patreon.com backslash Sip the Tally. With the, 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 with the,